What's up, everybody? My name is Jose Ocaño, and this is Bark, a show brought to you by Best Friends Animal Society. Ready to bark? Sweet. In today's show, we'll meet a kangaroo kitten, a very opinionated dog, and a flight attendant who spends her days off helping pets take off to new homes. Ready? Here we go. Do you find it hard to keep intense feelings to yourself? I know I do. Meet Mo. It was only after Kristen officially adopting Mo that she discovered just how opinionated her sweet pup can be. Take a listen to his most recent rant. <coughs> Oh my. How dare he ride a bicycle? Huh? Ah! Well, we totally feel ya. Cats, of course, have their own ways of communicating. The kitten actually emailed me and requested to change the name of this show to get ready for it, Meow. I want to tell you about Actually, I want to show you a place that changes the life of nearly everyone who visits. The Best Friends Animal Sanctuary is tucked deep in the majestic red rocks of Southern Utah. On any given day, it's a home between homes for hundreds of animals, a life-saving haven for dogs and cats, pigs and horses, bunnies and birds, many of whom have special needs. Here, they receive love, care, and companionship, and the opportunity to find devoted families of their very own. Whoa! And if you want to see the sanctuary virtually, click the link below in the description. Ooh, kitty! Come here, kitty! The sanctuary is an amazing place. The only thing more inspiring are the animals who live there. Meet Rat. Not only is she the go-to pup when it comes to helping shy dogs come out of their shell, her mouth-eye coordination is on point. Hi everyone, I'm Jana. I'm a caregiver here at the sanctuary in Kanab. And this is Rad, and she is going to show you a rad way to eat dog treats. Enjoy. Ten. That's pretty rad. I could use 30 treats right about now, too. I did it! O-M-G. It's Adopt-A-Cat Month. There are plenty of days left in June to bring home a cat or kitten of your very own. In the meantime, check out Rexy Roo, who recently hopped her way into her adopter's heart. Good job. As soon as I saw the video of Rexy on the Best Friends Instagram, it, it was just, I was immediately drawn to him. It's really amazing to see his spirit and his personality really shine. He was just such an inspiration to everybody who met him. We all just loved him so much. He's just like the sweetest cat ever. And he just like loves to snuggle and eat. And so do I. So we're a good match. <laughs> but it's just impossible not to fall in love with him. He had my heart immediately. Speaking of special cats, this is Cobalt, available to adopt from our life-saving center in Los Angeles. Cobalt has been healing since she came into our care. If we run a DNA test on Cobalt, would she be Baby Yoda, a gremlin, both? Tell us in the comments below what you think. This just in, Best Friend's first ever virtual adoption event. More than 1,700 pets found love online, like this kitten from Helen Sanders' cat paws, and wow. The SPCA of Northern Nevada sent home nearly all of the animals in its care, including this lucky pup, Almond Joy. Delicious. Just when you thought you couldn't take another conference call, our friends at the Brandywine Valley SPCA are offering puppy poppins and kitten cameos to join your next Zoom call. We can always count on our furry friend to lift us up, even in the most uncertain times. This is such a cool fundraising idea. Click the link below to schedule your next Zoomy meeting so that you can have some of these furry friends bring some happiness to your next call. Best Friends Animal Society recently caught up with James Evans, president of CARE, 
Companions and Animals for Reform and Equity, to talk about how animal welfare lacks diversity. In the recent Best Friends podcast, we take the time to listen and understand how we can do better and be better moving forward in our life-saving work. I think this idea that, you know, in the field that we hate people, but we love animals, I think that's starting to wane and I'm glad to see it. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, care can be more a part of that process of, of us falling back in love with each other again. And in the process, uh, creating better human beings for, for animals to be partnered with, right? Because ultimately, when that animal leaves the shelter, it's leaving the shelter with a human being, and that human being needs to be loved and, and fortified so it can return that same love and fortification to, to the animal. And I, I, I think we're moving in that direction. You can listen to the full podcast at the link below. Every once in a while, you meet someone you wish you could just tell the whole world about and maybe even clone. Erica Staten is one of those people. A flight attendant for Delta, Erica spends her days off escorting dogs and cats in shelters to new homes all around the country. And I was lucky enough to get to talk to her about all of her amazing work. We are so happy to have you here. When I learned about your story and what you do to help animals, I honestly was just so blown away and inspired. Tell all of our viewers um, a little bit about yourself and what you do for Delta and in the animal rescue world. Okay. Hi, Jose. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hello from Ohio. Um, I am a flight attendant with Delta Airlines and I have been there for 20 years. It's so incredible when you think about how one act of kindness can actually turn into something really powerful. And it, this is a whole program that helps animals find their forever homes. Can you tell me a little bit about a dog that you recently helped during this COVID-19 pandemic? Um, I believe the dog's name is Odie, and you worked with one of our colleagues, Melissa Lapani, who works in the Mountain West region. Uh, tell me a little bit about Odie and just like his journey to being saved and rescued. When COVID-19 started, we, we held on for as long as we could, and then we finally had to um, suspend our operations, which was unfortunate. Um, but it, we, just, we just couldn't, uh, you know, risk you know, asking our transporters to maybe get on a plane or maybe not get on a plane, <laughs> you know. So um, when Melissa called me, she said, you think you could transport this dog I have as a foster? And I said, well, Melissa, we've kind of suspended operations. I said, tell me where he needs to go. And I said, maybe I can work it into my schedule. And uh, because we do all of our transports on our off days. <clears throat> and so, um, so she said, he needs, his name's Odie, he's teeny tiny, um, <laughs> and he needs to go to his new adopted home in Atlanta, and it's the best home for him. He was great. His uh, new family was there to meet me in Atlanta. Um, they were very excited. I could tell that he's, he went to the most wonderful home. They were very excited to get him, and that's that is probably the most important thing to uh, probably any of us transporters is that it's so exciting to be able to see, even if it's just they're, you're transporting them to a, a rescue, you know, it's so excited to see people that are excited to have new family members. And that was important to me. Such a beautiful thing. And I th it, it really is powerful how quickly we can build these bonds and connections with animals and like, you know, I'm just really inspired and blown away that in the midst of this pandemic, you know, <laughs> you lied to Salt Lake City to stay the night to pick up this pup and then transport him to Atlanta. That's really incredible. What is part of what motivates you to help animals? I came up with this idea that maybe this is my way of helping. You can always give money, but you know, if you can give your time as well, you know, that was important to me. I'm honestly so honored to have met you and grateful for the work you do because it really is going to take all these acts of kindness and compassion to help animals. And that's how we're going to save them all. It's people like you figuring out how can I do something, you know, with, within my life to help animals and to really kind of leverage being, you know, working for Delta and having these privileges to be able to fly all over the country 
and use that as a tool to save animals. I think it's innovative, it's super cool, and I'm just so happy that we met. And I appreciate you getting out the word about what we do. I very much appreciate that. We, we love what we do. This is part of our community segment where we thank and honor folks like Erica who are boots on the ground, helping pets and people in their community. Join me and the rest of our best friends family in giving her and her team a round of applause. And finally, the clip of the day. Which one of these is not like the other? All right, thanks for barking with us. We leave you with the song called Rescue Dog Day 10 Rivers by the Suki's Junket and a message from our friend Matt on how rescue pets inspired him to write this song. So until next time, be nice to each other and make good choices. Hey Jose, Matt here from the Suitcase Junket. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk. Um, ever since we adopted this little hound about 10 years ago, um, we've been really passionate about trying to uh, rescue dogs and keep them in our lives. And this is our, our new friend Vinny here, who's new to the family. Um, uh, the song, 10 Rivers, that goes along with this video is sort of about finding your home and, and, and getting there and what it, take, what it takes to get there. Hey, leave it, good girl. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it and thanks for taking the time. It's blowing me back home